art of storytelling to you. Last week when I introduced the art of storytelling to you, I had indicators uh, five R's. Can you help me recall? The five R's of storytelling. Yes, anyone can put your hand up, unmute and speak. Anyone? Never mind, the five R's I'll repeat it for you. The sixth R is repeat. Okay, the five R's are first receive. Receive the story. Reflect on the story. Let the churning happen in the mind. Third step, retain the story. It must become your story. Relate to the story. Finally, retell the story. These are the five R's. And the sixth R is repeated as often as possible so that people remember the stories. Okay? So these are the five R's of storytelling. Now, why is so storytelling, especially the oral storytelling and uh, using you know, all these human elements, why is it so very important? Okay, now what happens is we have something called a limbic brain here, which is a picture brain, which sees pictures. And there's a brain here, which is called the frontal neocortex brain. And the frontal neocortex brain processes data, logic, reasoning, and things like that. This limbic brain is in charge of uh, visual images, emotions, decision making. And once I can reach this limbic brain, it remains there forever. Or maybe for a long time. Okay. If you're all have done this exercise in the past couple of times, if you are all keen, I will do it this exercise for you. But for that, you have to come on camera. Can you come on camera? I'll show you how to, I'll, I'll take you through an exercise. Please come on camera, yeah? Yeah, good, good. Right, so Agwanda, come on camera. Right, Lakshmi Ravichandranji, please come on camera. Dr. Smita, please come on camera. I want to do this exercise for me. RK Gupta ji, camera mein aayu. Ready? So I'll give you some instructions in simple English. Listen to me carefully and do what I ask you to do. Right? Listen to me carefully. Do what I ask you to do. Show me your hands. Rub your hands. Show me your hands again. Clap. Put up your index fingers. Are these index fingers? No. Then why did you put it up? <laughs> limbic brain. Limbic brain. It sees a picture is equal to a thousand words. So your, your mind was here. It started working. Okay, ready now? Now you know. Ready? Show me your hands. Rub your hands. Show me your hands. Clap. Put up your index finger. But it took some time. You were worrying. You know, why is he not putting? And why should I put? And <laughs> that comes. Out. Now see how it works. Ready? Last time. Now the second time your brain went here, the neocortex brain. It was checking my logic. A is he right? Hey, we should be careful. Last time. Okay. Show me your hands. Rub your hands. Show me your hands. Yeah. Put up your left arm. Point it behind you. Point it in front of you. Bring it down. Spin it. And slowly touch your chin. This is cheek. This is chin. <laughs> See, you need to be extraordinarily alert when the limbic brain is functioning. So when I tell you a story, or when anyone tells a story, the story goes right to our limbic brain or it should go right to our limbic brain. If it goes to the limbic brain, it stays there. You help in the process of retaining, relating and retelling. But if it remains here, 
you may get it dropped. Okay. So this is a very important thing and this exercise has been done number of times. Every, every time people say the same. They again will show their index finger, put it here, there, all over the place. So uh, this is the, a very important aspect of storytelling. You have to remember, reach the limbic brain. For reaching the limbic brain, you have to follow a certain pattern. <clears throat> One, start with a bang. Always start the story with a bang. That's why we always had a beginning, you know, once upon a time, long, long ago, that's how people used to say. You know, start at the time, long, long ago, what happened? So when I say this, the eyes open wide and it reaches the limbic brain. There was a Raja. Now Rajas are all gone. But they always started with certain, you know, which would tickle your imagination. Then nobody will come to the suspense part of it immediately. What happened next? Oh, what happened next? So start with the bang. Having started with the bang, now introduce the story slowly. Develop the story. So start with the bang, introduce, develop, add, you know, mirch masalas. You know, they say upu madaga and things like that. Add some mirchi masala, add some humor. Come back to the main line and bring it to a nice close. And when you bring it to a close, Remember, you can leave the audience with a sense of reflection. What happened next? Or you can even leave it to a suspense. I don't know. That, that is the way they, they produce all these serials and give you season two, season three, and it goes on. Give you a sense of complete, yet not complete. The story is to be told in that way. And every good teacher, every good, and it's very useful for teaching and training as well. Especially if you are doing a training program and at the end of the first hour you want to take a break. Tell them, let's come back from tea and find out what happened next. They'll quickly come back from tea. If you tell them this is the subject, after lunch we will do this, then they'll come back after uh, much later. In. They'll come even much later. So give them, give them the sense of suspense so that they finish tea and come back quickly. The same way, that's how the story is being told. Now, I'm going to share a story with you. Not just one, one or two stories. And uh, based on these stories, after I share the story, is it okay, Gupta ji? Is my voice okay now? Are you able to hear me? You can type Y in the chat box if I'm, you are able to hear me well. You have to type Y. That means you are hearing me well. If you're not hearing me, type N. Yes, good. Gupta is able to hear me. Now, <clears throat> so I'm going to tell you a story. This story happened not too long ago. Not too long ago. It involves an aircraft, but not what happened 39, 40 days before. It was involved in an Air India flight. But again, like I said, no, not 39, 40 days before. It was an Air India flight. It was taking off from Bombay. And the flight was meant to go to the Middle East. It was one of those jumbo aircrafts, a you know, big one. Big one. It was carrying a crew of 312 passengers. It was the 1st of January, 1978, midnight. And uh, a lot of people were in the queue. The aircraft took off and exactly 40 minutes later, bent down in the Arabian Sea. It simply fell down, sank all 332 passengers, including crew, were killed. It was one of the most tragic accidents that ever happened in the day. And exactly at that time, I was flying uh, Kolkata, Chennai, <laughs> Indian Airlines flight. And when I landed in Delhi, they told me this is the news which happened yesterday. That was uh, the story. But let's come to the other part of the story, which we read in the papers much later. There was a person who had uh, gone to the airport to board the flight. And the queue was pretty long. And uh, there was another fellow who was also, who also had, you know, they always overbook. 
but because he could not show up on time, they were saying that, uh, sorry, the flight is full. We will accommodate you in the next flight. Now, this gentleman who was being told that we will accommodate him in the next flight, then he said, sir, somehow help me, sir. I've got to take a job on the 2nd of January there. If I go land there tonight, tomorrow morning, I have to take a job. And if I don't take the job, I'm gone. I will have to struggle for the job all over again. Now, this gentleman, when he was pleading, there was another gentleman who, was, who had just got his ticket confirmed. He said, suppose I cancel my ticket. Will you give it to him? Because he seems to have a job. And I want to surprise my family by going back home. So the airline has a strict, has a very special case. Normally they give it to the first person in the waiting list or something like that. They said, okay, if you cancel, we will give it to him. The ticket was transferred and then this family was hearing the news when they heard they were they already started more. This man is gone. This man is gone. Our man who took the flight to Middle East is dead. There is a knock on the door. And this man walks in. And the person who did not have a ticket till half an hour before the doors were closed perished in the air crash. So stories can have on the one side a very tragic ending. 312 lives lost. 332 including that of the crew lost. On the other side you have one family deliriously happy because the person they thought dead has come back home. This happened when I was on the flight. And incidentally, I was also going on a flight to join my employer in Delhi. It all happens at the same time. And uh, when I was reading all this news, the stories struck me very vividly. So this story, when I'm telling it on a Adult platform can be told like this. I can also add a lot of drama. You know what happened next? You wouldn't believe it. You would this. I can add all this drama element in the story. Okay. So this is called a simple personal narrative, which can be told in an interesting form in a story. So that's the next exercise, which I would like the participants here to do. Please pick up a personal narrative first. Tell me a narrative, something that happened in your life. It could be something very ordinary. Okay. But please say that narrative in an interesting storytelling form so that the five R's, if you can recall, receive, reflect, retain, relate, and retell. These five elements, you must have, these, the story must have these five elements. So who would like to go first? You can go to the reactions thing and put up your hand like this. Okay, this is the indication to say you are prepared to go. So who's going to put up the hand first? Anyone? Suresh Nandaji should tell us a story. <laughs> I have several stories sir but then say one start with <laughs> i'm not a good storyteller never, never mind never mind effective uh, storyteller never mind see remember one thing when you're going to tell a story please like you no know, when you're singing or when you're telling a story never ever tell i am a poor singer i've come here that means you're insulting the audience okay 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 okay, okay. similarly uh, never ever tell the okay, story okay. Person, okay, i don't know i'm not a good storyteller Okay, we have nine of you waiting here, and eleven of you waiting to listen to you. Okay, sir. Okay, thank so, you. Thank no you apologies. So Please go ahead. You see, I'm usually I'm an optimist person, and I hope always for the best and prepare <coughs> for the worst. And in 2010, I was traveling to Mumbai by Konak Express. I had to, at that time, I used to stay in Raigada in Odisha, you might be knowing. I have to take a train from Vijayanagaram. So my ticket was not confirmed. At the end of the moment, when I was about to board the train, I got the message. And that I tried through MP quota, Member of Parliament quota. Member of Parliament quota have their 
certain amount of train reservation, bus reservation in state, all these things. So uh, I was really, at that time, my children were small. And uh, over my journey from Vijayanagaram to Mumbai, but at the end, about to board the train, I got the message from that member of parliament that your ticket is confirmed. And I got very happy and elated. Mm. Always hope for the best, prepared for the worst is my uh, principle in my life. So you got a ticket and you could travel? Yeah, yeah. In Wonderful. comfortable travel. Instead of general compartment, I travel in a sleeper coach. Okay, good. good, good. That's very nice. Nice. In fact, you know, you know, a secret about the issuing of these uh, MP quota letters. That I don't don't want to know, sir. Please know. You must know. No, I know that. I know that there are. When, there the, are when the letter is signed by the PA, it means yeah, do yeah. what you like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unka it has a stamp hai. of the MP. It means issue the ticket. Unka jo letter paid hota hai, unke hota hai, unke yes. MP ki signature. Unka to in that the letter itself will say, I am directed to inform you that so and so is traveling. Please yeah, issue yeah. an emergency quota ticket and it will be signed by the PA to the minister. It means to the railway, do what you like. Even if you don't come, give no problem. Even you can uh, get that letter and put it in the railway mailbox, Box. railway bhavan. So, a ghanta pehle wo confirm hota. Correct. You, yeah. you shouldn't have you shouldn't panic. Yeah. Good, good. Very nice. I, I, thank you, Suresh Nandaji. Thank you, sir. Suresh Nandaji, thank you. Okay. Now we will move to the next storyteller, Nandini. Nandini is a storyteller. She is from Chennai and she will share a story. Good evening, come, Nandini, ma'am. <laughs> thank Wanna you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And she's a very young lady. Please don't call her ma'am. <laughs> Vanakam, Nandini. Vanakam, Vanakam, sir. Thank you. Where are you from? Hello, sir. Nandini. How are you? Good. 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 He's learned all these languages on the way. So he knows a lot of things. Okay. Little bit, sir. Suresh, you know Bangla? Bangla, sir. You know the same thing. You know the same thing. Okay. Okay. You know the same thing. You know the same thing. Okay. 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 Let's listen to Nandini. Okay. After this, we'll have Dr. Smita tell a story. There was a <clears throat> there was a village in a uh, there was a mount there was a very uh, secluded village in on a mountain. So when I say it's a secluded very secluded village in a mountain, you we have to understand the uh, um, your amenities are very less. There is no uh, doctor on call. There is no transport is very uh, minimal. And uh, power supply is very less. Even water is also very, uh, I mean, like not scarce, but very, uh, what is it? Not, there are times that you get water. Okay. So there were uh, is such a village on a mountain. The story happened sometime during 1980s. Okay. Um, there was a lady. And she was nine months uh, pregnant. Mm -hmm. The whole family is like uh, waiting, biting nails because she's nine months pregnant. It is late in the evening. She might go into labor anytime. That was their fear. And taking her to the hospital, finding a nurse, there was difficult. And all their fears uh, came to light. She mm -hmm. went into labor and they had to somehow took her to the... Uh, uh, hospital, small hospital there, and uh, this lady delivered a girl baby that night. The whole family was so happy. The first child, the first grandchild, and all that of the family, and the girl, the child also grew up nicely. When the child went to school, they noticed something. Uh, this child was slow. She wasn't as bubbly as she used to be when she was born, like when she was a toddler. She was very quiet, reserved and all that. And uh, um, it was, uh, she didn't go up and uh, she wasn't coming out and talking. Very quiet, reserved child. And she always was very slow. She, her, she picked up lessons slowly and all that. 
So one day, the school's uh, headmaster, he noticed such children and uh, he called all of them to his office and gave them all a six stanza poem. So each child had to memorize one stanza and recite it every day. And the reward was, he said, all of you will get the assembly together, get the whole school together on one fine afternoon. And you will all have to recite this poem stanza by stanza, one by one, you have to go on stage and recite. Until you get it right, we are going to practice. So every day, finish our lunch fast and come to my cabin. We are going to do it. These children, no, they are already slow. Okay. So what happened? They didn't take it seriously. The first day came, nobody read, uh, nobody had uh, even tried to memorize. So he gave nicely, fat, 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 fat on everybody's head. That's when they understood the seriousness this man was talking. Mm -hmm. So that evening they went home, they started learning all that they went and uh, one by one, slowly they started practicing. What was going on in this, inside this girl's head was, how am I going to stand in front of the whole school and recite this poem? And she was like, okay, only one stanza, somehow I will get it right, somehow I'll get it right. But this principal was very strict. He did not uh, waver in, in his goal. He wanted them to be perfect. So it took around six, seven weeks for it to happen. And one fine day, all of them were in synchronized manner. The poem went all ups and downs happily, they told. And even the children were happy about their performance. The day of recitation came. The whole school is gathered. Imagine 300 students, uh, all teachers, even the staff are there. And everybody are looking at the six, six children there standing. First one was our girl, our small girl. She's sweating, her legs are shaking. And I mean, like she's having a, there's a sound going on there. She's like almost nauseating, so scared. Wow. In spite of the air conditioned room. Principal went on top and he spoke. Good afternoon, everybody. Today we have uh, six jewels from the school who are going to present to you a nice poem. She went. She was the first one. She had to introduce a poem and read the first stanza. She went on stop. She went, she stood there. She held the podium. That's all, blank. 20 oh. years later, 20 years later, a similar stage. A similar stage, same assembly, school assembly. Almost 300 children sitting over there. And our girl is uh, the same girl. She's delivering a big speech on uh, uh, importance of children, education um, in the democracy of India. I mean, like on a Republic Day speech. Oh, yeah, wonderful. <laughs> now, that girl is none other than me. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> but yes, congratulations. Okay. So just because Mohan sir wanted me to, wanted us to tell us something personal, that day changed my life. My principal changed my life. And whatever I am, whatever I am today, I owe it all to my teachers along the way, even to Mohan sir. He taught me how to tell stories. <laughs> and he gave me, he put this idea into my head. So this is his, this story, this is one type of telling he used to introduce himself uh, during sessions. Do you also leave at Raja Annapalai Prum? No. Nandini? No. Sorry, two, story, two storytellers should not live in the same area. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> then we become competitors. Oh, no. Moans are guru. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> See, generally, this is called dramatizing a story <laughs> where you introduce the lead character as myself. You can commit, bring it to the end of the story. It's an amazing way of storytelling. Excellent. Wonderful, wonderful. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Thank okay, we now go to Dr. Smita here. She's a regular MBBS doctor. And she would, I would request her to stay, stay, uh, share a story. From Bombay. Yes, Dr. Smita, the phone the line is yours. 
unmute okay. so this is a personal narrative narrative story yeah. i was i was 8 years old the Just light like... is behind you doctor <laughs> oh it looks like a halo maybe you know who knows <laughs> Uh, but I can't help it for now. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Move your camera in such a way so that, uh, that laptop or camera in such a way that the, the yeah. Now it's better. Now it's better. Wonderful. Go ahead. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. So similar to the way Nandini explained, some of the incidents in life change your personality and live a long life imprint. So I was eight years old that time. Um, studious right from the beginning. Second year, I guess it was my second year exam and um, teacher gave question paper. My role, my surname started from A that time. So I was always a first or a second bencher whenever in, in during the exam time. So teacher gave paper. Uh, I, I took my question paper. So it was very easy, hurriedly, happily finished writing the paper and then gave it back to the teacher. Once my writing was over, I was turning around my friend and you know how easy the question paper was and discussing the answers that I've written. The teacher after collecting the question papers and the answer papers was asking who has not written their name and roll number on the answer paper. I was like, oh, my paper was very nice. I wrote all the answers in the for the questions. So it's not me. And then I went back chatting to my friend behind that I've written this, I've written that. She kept screaming on the top of her voice, who has not written your name and roll number on the answer paper? I, I blindly ignore, assuming that I my yeah. question paper was completely all perfect. So then what she did was, because she could not get a response from the children, she started taking the answer paper to each and every desk. But unfortunately, she started from the other side, right from the other bench. She went to each and every desk. Is this your answer paper? Is this your? Is this your? One, two, three, four. All each and every benches. And when she came to my bench at the last, and then she showed me, is this your? And I was like, oh yeah, this is my paper. <laughs> what, what, what could, I was happy to tell her, yes, this is my paper I've written. And then one tight slap. <laughs> one tight slap, such a tight slap that my cheek ate. My friends were saying that they're all five, five fingers of her were on my face. And I, I did not know what to do. The entire class was laughing. I was in pain. I was so embarrassed. And I did not know, did I write the paper right, wrong? But such kind of incidents made, made me later on be more sincere, more attentive. So yeah, I don't know, should I thank, like Nandini thanks that principal. I don't know, should I thank her because she she's not the one that... <laughs> yeah, that was one story that... Wonderful, was wonderful. Egg dunga, <laughs> yeah. Thank Good. you. Something, you know, we sometimes we learn lessons by getting... A nice case. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, this is a very, what happened was I was writing a Reserve Bank Officers Examination, entrance examination for Reserve Bank Officers Examination. And there were three papers, English, Economics, and uh, Objective Type of Questions. So English was the first day paper. So I wrote the Eng English paper and uh, can you imagine my English paper was bad that day? <laughs> so when I told this to a few people, they wouldn't believe. Are, Tumara English kharab hai. I'm Delhi wale yaar, humko English aata nahi hai. How can your English be bad? <laughs> so I said, yeah, pata nahi. So next day, I thought, you know, better not go to the exam because English gone. What will I do in any other? <laughs> so I thought I will go away to a movie. A friend brought his school. He said, chalo yaar, kuch na kuch to likhte hai. Let's go write somewhere. I said, chalo. Then I said, yaar, kya likhna hai, yaar? He said, nahi, nahi, yaar, paper likhne Anjali aayegi. Chalo, usko at least dekhte. <laughs> so that fellow, his name is Mathur. He had something for Anjali. He took me along. <laughs> I said, I'm bad. We waited. I wrote next paper. Paper number two, economics. Economics is, I'm strong in economics. So I did it reasonably well. And then we had lunch. And after lunch, we sat down for objective paper. And exactly 15 days later, a news came saying that the rules of valuation has been changed. Whoever passes in the objective type paper, only their other two papers will be valued. 
<laughs> I am so good in objective. You give me a paper today, today I will clear. <laughs> so I stood first in objective, first in economics, and clear things. So this oh, could be a stroke, stroke of good luck. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah the application came to me in one fruit paper. <laughs> <laughs> good. So sometimes, you know, good luck comes. But for me, good luck taught me a good lesson. Whereas for uh, Smita, a nice lab taught her a lesson. Wonderful. Good. Uh, let, let's see. Let's see. Three storytellers have already told. Ajay Babu, Ajay Rai, would you like to share a story? My friend Jagdish has come. Jagdish. Jagdish has some wonderful stories to tell if you can. Jagdish, would you like to share a story? Let his audio come on. Jagdish is a very senior person. Let's his audio come on, I'll tell you. Yeah, Jagdish, your audio is there. You're able to hear me? If you're able to hear me, type Y in the chat box. Okay, we'll wait as soon as for him to get into the groove. Anybody else? Lakshmi, would you like to tell us a story? Lakshmi Ravichan. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a time when all right, <clears throat> let me give a try. I don't know. Uh, this uh, this happened to me like uh, three, uh, uh, sorry, one year back, a year back, and a year and a half back. I had uh, gone for a trek uh, to the uh, Great Himalayas. <laughs> and uh, as we were uh, coming back, uh, we finished the trek and we were uh, coming back, uh, returning to Dehradun to get the flight. And um, all of a sudden, uh, uh, we had to just stop over in uh, some small place. I don't remember any of the names, but then a nice guest house. And then uh, we uh, stayed there for the night. And uh, there were uh, some announcement. It was raining, pouring like anything. But uh, okay, so the next day we had to go to uh, Katkodam. From there, we had to take... Uh, uh, so, 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 no, I'm sorry, somewhere, Bageshwar or somewhere. And then we had to reach... Uh, Rishikesh and then to uh, Dehradun. But so we need that, uh, we needed that uh, 12 hours to 18 hours time. So we were going on the road the next day morning. And some announcements were coming through, like saying, oh, it's going to be a heavily uh, pouring uh, thing today. So there was a red alert also, apparently, which we weren't aware of. And uh, all the five of us, we were going by a huge Jeep. And as we were uh, uh, passing through another one hour or uh, so, we would have reached our destination. Prior to that, there was a huge uh, landslide and uh, our car stopped. And uh, that's it. And that was a Monday. And today being a Monday, I remember that. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, we, uh, the car stopped and the driver said, okay, we'll have to wait for some time. I don't know what is happening. I heard there is some traffic jam is what first we thought. And then slowly when we went there, and then it was, it, we were waiting there for more than an hour and then somebody went there and then they said, no, the road has caved in oh. ahead. So we couldn't move and we were all stuck there and we couldn't return also. And because of a huge line of traffic and the roads are quite narrow over there. And uh, so we had to wait. And the night came and still it was pouring. And uh, the next to our road, just a deep uh, gorge. And then the river Kosi was running. Oh. Ferocious, it was just going. And uh, the other side was the mountain. And our car was in the right bank in the middle. And so this side, the mountain, and this other side, the river. Really? So we had nowhere else to go and we were all patiently waiting, thinking that something or the other will happen. We'll be able to move ahead. But it, we had to stay put the night and that was a really scary night. Oh. For all I remember, the trauma is still there with me. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, raining constant, consistently oh. and uh, it was just like, uh, almost like a Bombay deluge that happened oh. in 2005. And um, so what happened was we went away. I mean, no dinner or anything. Forget about the dinner. We wanted to go from that place, but uh, nothing could be done. And at night around, uh, uh, we were just sitting inside the car 
uh, all of a sudden, like around three o'clock, the driver said, Abhi, bhago, bhago. <laughs> and then <laughs> we were all wondering what is going on. And true to that, we saw the uh, water gushing just in front of us. <laughs> and uh, we didn't know what to do. And the driver quickly reversed the car. We were just uh, directing him. And we were I mean, about to cross that. And there was a huge uh, tree branch that fell. We luckily escaped that. And we wanted to still reverse. And by the time we reached that spot, there was a huge landslide over there also. And uh, for that moment, uh, then we thought, OK, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> 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 so it was really, really scary around three o'clock. I can never forget it. So for a long time, I used to just suddenly wake up. Okay, it's three o'clock. <laughs> so the whole thing would come up, you know, like a, uh, like a picture, like a movie, like a, a James Bond movie. So uh, we were being chased by uh, landslides and water on the other side and tree falling on the other side, the boulders falling. So it was quite a scary night. And after two days, uh, the road um, was, I mean, they, they fixed the road and then we could move on. Oh. And fortunately, we could take the flight also back home. And <laughs> this, <laughs> and that was a flash flood is what they said. Okay. It happens quite often in the UP side. And um, I mean, uh, not in the UP side, it is- uh, Uttarkashi uh, and places. Uttarkashi. Yeah. So that was a scary experience, and I can never forget that night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> quite so hilarious! Quite was hilarious. Like, uh, encountered death, and then uh, we came out. Yeah. Quite hilarious. <laughs> so all our friends, we were all saying bye to each other, <laughs> and we were all petrified, thinking that the whole water is going to gobble us up, our vehicle and everything. So luckily, I mean, it stopped yeah. there. I think. It would have been fun if, like a true James Bond movie, you would have pressed the gear yes, shaft yes, and then you would have been thrown into the earth. And then <laughs> it was it was a James Bond movie. I actually said the same thing. It, the experience is totally James Bond. The only thing that it really happened, not like in James Bond movie. Well, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. of them can be. Some of them can <laughs> yeah. really, you know. Yeah, yeah really all they, they're all shot in uh, Universal Studio and whatnot. I mean, mm. everything will seem real, but this was real. In fact. Yes, it is Absolutely indeed, indeed. wonderful. Great. Hilarious. <laughs> so, it is not hilarious, it's horrifying. Huh? Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. Na, hasne wala. Hilarious, hilarious it would have been if Lakshmi had said, oh, then I woke up from bed and had my morning puff. It, it, it's a combination <laughs> of, no sir, it's a combination of hilarious and ah, scary. Hey, Can I say yes, that? Yes. Hilarious, hilarious true, I'll tell you, truly hilarious. I was in Bombay and the language spoken in Bombay is quite different, for the Hindi is quite different from what it yeah. is spoken in yeah. the rest of India. Yeah, yeah. So I spent some time in Bombay and I was also, I joined the Reserve Bank of India in Delhi. So uh, next to where I was staying, there was a, a lady who's, you know, who was staying with her husband just next door. And she was from Bombay. So we were buying vegetables. You were and staying at RBI Cologne in the house car? No, no, I was staying in Safdarjan Enclave. A bachelor said, I, mean, I was saying, I paid a paying guest accommodation. Okay, okay. The paying guest, there were people were very kind. They used to serve me coffee, breakfast, lunch, everything. And I'll tell you what I paid in return later. <laughs> so, and then, uh, so this lady is from Bombay and she found, uh, she she had, she did not understand what this Delhi, Delhi fellow language they were speaking. She liked more <laughs> of our Hindi. So, then what happened was, uh, we were buying vegetables. So she came down and then we got chatting and then she was telling that sabji wala there. Kanda do, patata, kothmir. Then that uh, vegetable fellow told me and told that, Madam, aap kuch mat boliye. you just point out. I will tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so she pointed out. He said, I isko piyaj bolte hain, onions and pine. <laughs> it's kanda. <laughs> then she pointed to potatoes. He said, Alu, patata. <laughs> then she said, Kothmir. He said, Dhaniya. <laughs> it was an amazing learning experience. I learned uh, how they speak in Bombay also. And so also, you know, Bola. 
Ah. It's not uh, peta. Ah. Opla. Opla. <laughs> <laughs> then for kerosene, they used to say gas lead. <laughs> ah, gas lead. <laughs> yeah. Just as uh, Lakshmi Ravichandran was saying, we were once traveling in the ghat section. I was a currency officer of that area. I was going to inspect a few currency chairs. In the ghat section, there was a traffic jam. Everything halted. Suddenly, the driver come, came to me and said, Sir, hollu, hollu, sab shuru ho gaya. I said, hollu, hollu, kya hota hai? Then hollu, hollu means, yeah, another, it means dhire, dhire. Slowly, slowly, it has started. It was a great experience. <laughs> Same thing, you know, when I took charge as officer in charge there, so there was a pun of mine. I know I was being the currency officer. I had three levels of security, armed security and things like that. So there was one fellow just outside my room. He was called the Subeda, uniformed fellow. So I called him. I said, Chawan, zara asha, zara andar aayenge? That fellow came and looked at me with his mouth open. I said, Kya ho gaya? He said, Sir, Amara Sat Sal Honeko Aya hai Pali Bar Kisina Amko Apu Bola hai. <laughs> In Bombay Sat Tobi Pumit. He said, First time somebody called me Aap. <laughs> so that language experience was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have, uh, of course, one thing I used to learn Bombay Hindi or Khali Pili tension ne lene ka, that I learned very fast. <laughs> because that was what was taught to me because I was in charge of how many 30,000 crores worth of currency. Oh. So my there was a person who was called a treasurer who used to come with me to the wall to see that he will say, Sir, sab kuch hamal sam, ham samalega. Aapko Khali Pili tension ne lene ka. <laughs> Bindas rene ka. Bindas rene ka. <laughs> crores of rupees ah. slipping through your fingers every day. Every day, yes. <laughs> virtually slipping. So so virtually slipping through. I used to supervise waiting all these for soiled notes throw into a machine which will shred them and throw them out. <laughs> Fresh currency notes used to come. And then that was where I, I picked up the arch. You know, I can now touch a packet of currency, pick out one note and say, this is counterfeit. <laughs> So this is some other day on another occasion. Wonderful, great story to learn from Lakshmi Ravichandran. Let's listen to the others here, Kanta, Surya Narayan Rauji, Vijay Lakshmi, Ajay Rai. Please, who would like to share stories? Yeah, Ajay Rai. So, I to... Actually, I You are free to tell story in Hindi and English, but... If you can translate your story into English, fine. Otherwise, you say it in Hindi, I can translate it into English for others. Okay, okay, okay. But I don't like the language to be a constraint when it comes to storytelling. Ah, right. So, Hindi, I Actually, yes, sir. I'm going to marketing. We were going to marketing. We were touring to touring. We were going to Northern India. Even I used to go to Punjab, so I was like, product, I was like, 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 I हम तो जी आप जे ही खड़ते हैं <laughs> खड़ते हैं <laughs> हम तो आपका ही सामान खड़ते हैं वो मैंने कहा यार कहां से खड़ते हो क्या मतलब समझा नहीं मैं समझा खोत रहे कहीं से ला रहा है क्या मैं मैं अपना नॉर्मल विजिट पे गया तो बाद में किसी ने बताया कि ये लाने को परचेज करने को खड़ते कहते हैं खड़ते बोलते हैं <laughs> खड़ते 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 yeah. So, as a marketing man, his experience in selling products and trying to understand the language. Yeah, mm. different. It, has, <laughs> it is. It has the same thing, you know. That like I was staying in Bombay in a in a, yeah. in a hostel with my. I was going on training to the Reserve Bank. My next door uh, room was my room was no, my. I was in a room and the next room was shared by a Bengali speaking gentleman. So okay. he was so delighted that I speak Bengali and he used to speak Bengali. So morning the sweeper came. He said, Sab, Kholi, Sab, Karnega. Kholi in, uh, 
Kohli means room. And then, haa, yaar, khali, uh, kar do. Now, this Bengali gentleman goes and tells him, Hamara ghor bhi saaf kar do. A <laughs> <laughs> sweeper is a mischief maker. Uh, saab, aapka ghar yahaan kaha hai aaya? Toh Kalkitta mein hai. <laughs> He said, Amara Ghor bhi saaf kar do. I said, my, my Ghor and Kohli are one and the same room. <laughs> so these beautiful expressions used to be fun. He said, he said, how do you understand all this? Understand nahi. You still have to interact and understand. Very nice, Ajay Rai. Let's go to the next storyteller. Vijay Lakshmi, would you like to share a story? Vijay Lakshmi, are you there? Surya Naranjay Rauji, you would like to share a story? Story experience. Uh, mine is a listening experience. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anta, would you like to share a story? No? I, I'm not very good with telling. I can't remember <laughs> anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the if things I, I would remember, I will. Next time. Yeah, one of the things I would recommend uh, to everyone is uh, please cultivate the art of writing down your story. Yeah. Make it a point to write a story. Anything that happens. See, Lakshmi could say, say it so vividly what happened. This happened. That happens in a year back. Now, suppose you had the habit of writing down. It, it makes an amazing impact. You can really write down your stories. It, it adds it adds one to your communicating capacity. Yeah. It makes you a very interesting person to when, when, when you speak, you have this power of as though holding people spellbound. Okay, you, have, you have this. You know, it's a very powerful tool to tell stories, especially when you're uh, talking on subjects which are a little, I wouldn't call it abstract, which are a little subtle. In fact, uh, the art of telling stories is very, very uh, ancient. It's a very ancient art in India. Uh, the entire Prithviraj and Aso is by bards. Then Lakshmi by Kubaladi Mardani Thivo Jhansi Wali Rani Thi. It's all told poetically. Kabir Das in all his poems, in all his two liners, they're full of imagery and it needed, you know, we have to explain a lot of them. Mm -hmm. of them. There are some very interesting stories. We have Akbar Birbal stories, we have Vikram Betal stories, we have uh, stories from Tenali Rama who are. Uh, of all stories which give out wisdom in the form message of a simple also. Story. message also. Message. Message. See, there's a simple, very, very simple story. <coughs> this Tanali Rama was considered to be a court jester, somebody who everybody made fun of. And then in the kingdom where he was, Krishna Devaraya was the Raja in that kingdom. They said there was a scholar who had come in. And he was challenging every scholar to a debate. He said, if you beat me, I will go away. But if I beat you, and if I beat so many scholars from your kingdom, your kingdom is mine. So Krishna Devaraya was puzzled because many of his uh, scholars were losing one after the other, one after the other. He, they say, he said, you should do a, to show some skill which I cannot copy. Or do something, say something, do something, which I have to say, no, I don't have an answer. So Tenali Rama walked in, you know, looking around. He said, can I try? Everybody laughed. He said, okay, laugh after listening to my what I'm going to say. And then he told the scholar, sir, what are the conditions? He said, you have to make me admit that I don't know or I have lost. If you admit, I will leave. I have won so much of jewelry and uh, you know, gold coins by minted by the king and so much, so many acres of land I have won. All this I have won. So please do something. So Krishna, this fellow, this our Tenali Rama said, yes, yes, I will do. What's the big deal? I will do. And he told, the condition is very simple. What I do with my eyes closed, you have to do with your eyes open. <laughs> So this scholar laughed. He said, Kya, yeah, yeah. I will do. And he said, fine. Get me a plate full of chili powder. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay, band karke. Now you do. And that was the last they saw of that scholar. 
So see, the story says, from the story, we can learn so many things. If you can say, you know, don't underestimate anyone. Street smartness. And then, you know, then there's one more saying, he who laughs, laugh, uh, last, <laughs> laughs <laughs> loudest, in the sense, you know. So uh, many educated people, erudites, scholarly people, we don't call them erudite if they take it to their head. They, they are the people who, if you, if you get into an ahankara, we end up losing. So the stories of Tenali Rama, yeah, yeah. the stories of Birbal are all highlighting. Uh, Birbal was a wise guy. But Tenali Rama was seen something like a court jester. So these are the beautiful stories available in our entire yeah, in our heritage. Uh, my appeal to all of you would be, please make it a habit of reading stories. One place why, where I learned proper stories was I used to regularly buy Amar Chitra Katha comics. Okay. I am not marketing it, but the kind of comics that the entire Mahabharat series I purchased. One a comic at a time. I've got three volumes of them. And my knowledge of Mahabharat and the stories comes from those books. And nowadays Google has come. But before Google, we had no other way of knowing stories. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and the stories have an impact. The way it is told, these have an impact. Do you remember how did your grandmother tell you how it rained? We used to tell in the story format. Oh, like story, batayen. How does it rain? How will you tell it to a three-year-old child? I will tell you what my grandmother told me, then you tell me yours. Aap batayen. Suraj ji? My grandmother batati ki Badal aati hai. Uh, it is something like that. Then, for me, no badal, nothing. My grandmother used to say, up there, there is a fellow called Indra. Sky mein bata hai. And he travels in a dark ratha. So when you see the dark ratha, you know Indra is there somewhere. And he has a large earthen pot. And he has got a silver what I mean, uh, aluminium, not silver, aluminium jug. Kaha Indra ke paas aluminium jug. And he says, if you behave properly, he will dip that aluminium jug in that uh, pot and pour water. And when the water, aluminium jug is hitting against the earthen pot, the noise comes now, that is thunder. And when it comes, it flashes, that is lightning. And here is water. And she will tell this when we are feeding food to her. Say, oh, one roti and some sabji inside. <laughs> so I remember the way grandmother told me the story. And remember much later, and I used to tell this story to my son and now to my granddaughter. I remember my granddaughter. <laughs> she, where she will be 112 years old. But remember, you know, elders in the family mastered the art of storytelling. It has been in our culture. Not just in our culture. It's been there everywhere. It's been culture. The storytelling culture has been there all over the world. And this culture should grow. So seniors today, and we have all come together to see that this culture of storytelling grows. And I would, I'm inviting people to join this forum. Bring more of your friends, especially when you're listening to your stories. Bring your children, grandchildren, bring them along. I will tell them stories. Let them ask questions. So they should, you know, uh, when you're telling a story, it's something should happen to you. That is, you know, in wonder, your eyebrows should go up like this. We can relate to our life. Itself. Exactly. And when you're when you are in wonder, the, the knowledge goes straight into your limbic brain and leaves a lasting impact. Yeah, definitely. Okay, like uh, you hear to the story of uh, our, uh, you know, Chakravarti, honest Chakravarti, who? Tambataye, Harish Chandra. Raj Gopal Chari. Oh, Raj. Hey, yeah, Harish Chandra. Harish Chandra. Raja Harish, Harish Chandra. Chandra. Huh. When you listen to that story, and later on, if you are supposed to interpret it, that's where the art of retelling comes. That's where the uh, somebody says, is it possible like that? You say, no, it is not necessary. That's when. I learned the art of storytelling when somebody used to tell me, they say, it's not severe incidents they are given. Is it possible in a human's life? That person told me something very simple. Remember the North Star. 
nobody can reach the north star but it always shows you the way in the same way give absolute impossible examples maybe you will never reach them but something to keep looking at you know something to keep looking at in the and help you in the process of growth so thank you very much for being with me on this monday the second thank monday you. Thank every you, every monday we'll have a storytelling session sure, sure. Uh, give us a little come. story please. before we close yeah please do and please do there is time there yes, is no time please do please, please go ahead please go ahead i want you to i want to listen yeah. to you well we were at the college ah. we have formed what is called a, a humor club okay it's not the humor club that we know of now it was among the students and uh, it was a habit that we would tell each other jokes then one day a new student joined the college so he was invited or he wanted to come and see hey, mm -hmm. i also like jokes so i would like to come so he went there he came there to the meeting and then all of us were sitting there and one of them got up and said 407 and everyone started laughing and then another fellow got up and said 340 and everyone started laughing okay the new fellow was not able to understand what is happening he said what is funny about this 407 and 347 uh -huh. <laughs> then his friend who brought him in he explained you have got so many jokes to tell okay. and so little time our zoom time is very limited so we have cataloged the jokes given them numbers Okay. So one of us gives a number. We recollect the joke and start laughing. <laughs> so he, this new boy said, "May I also take a try?" Okay. So go ahead. And he said, "One hundred and three." Oh. No one laughed. He said, "What is wrong? Have I offended anyone at my zoo?" Then he said, "No. Some people know how to tell a joke. Some people don't." <laughs> so what is important is not the joke or the story mm. it's the way in which he yeah. relates that is yeah. the topic how yeah. to tell a story how to tell manner in which you catalog your stories give it the serial numbers and the mm. way in which you pronounce the number brings out the <laughs> yeah. humor yes anyway, thank you more yeah. carry the tale forward if you like it you I surely do <laughs> no, I surely if you don't I... like it tell me Oh yeah, like the laundry would would say, if you are satisfied with the work, tell others. If not, please tell us. <laughs> so these are very, very stories okay. to carry forward. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, folks, for being here. We we'll meet again Monday next. Please try share your stories. It can be personal. You have seen, you have heard, you have read. Catalog, write them down, catalog them, and uh, you will find that it is. Uh, it it does something. It transforms you. Very often, I say, into a pleased person inside. There's a pleased yeah, person. Yeah, that's a catharsis. It's a pleased person inside, and if you are in touch with a pleased person, there's a certain radiance, and you know, people even look at you and say, "Aap ko absent milne mein bahut acha lagta hai," because there is a happiness radiating out. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a whole lot of event tomorrow evening. We have gift to go. then uh, we have thursday we have antakshari friday we have yoga then in between uh, so many things are there please look at see archana would have put a small link there update of all our events so please do join the seniors today strengthen our hands let's make the seniors to the seniors a very happy community thank, thank you, you mohan thank you thank you thank you